Welcome to one of the stranger happenings in the smartphone market. So you might know that every time Samsung makes a new flagship smartphone, they create two versions, one powered by an Exynos chip and one powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon chip. And on the face of it, who cares? But I've spent some time with both of these versions of the Galaxy S20 Ultra, and I think the difference is so big, the Snapdragon version almost feels like a different smartphone. For example, performance. And while benchmarks aren't everything, they're a much better test of power than just seeing how fast apps open. Open. So I run Antutu on both, and the Snapdragon is just way ahead. 550,000 versus 500,000. It's almost a 10% jump. That's half a generational leap of performance. And if you think that's a big gap, it gets so much bigger. See, after running Antutu once, I decided to run it three more times continuously to see if either chip would overheat. And yeah. After the second run, this Snapdragon chip was at 40 degrees Celsius, which is good. After the third run, it jumped to 42, and actually after the final one, it went down to 39. But this Exynos, after just two runs of the benchmark, was at 59 degrees. 59 degrees. After run three, it had managed to somewhat control that temperature. It brought it down to 53, but that last run pushed it to 66 degrees. That is not a cool temperature. But okay, fine, the chip gets hotter. That's not something you're going to feel directly. But what it translates to is thermal throttling. The Exynos starts dialing its performance back when it gets hot. And because it gets hot so quickly, it's a problem. So while the Snapdragon score fell from around 550,000 to about 545,000 over the course of these benchmarks, the Exynos tanked, falling from about 500,000 to around 450,000. So you're now looking at effectively a 20% gap in performance. And it gets even worse. But first, if we take a look at the performance breakdown, you can see that while Samsung's CPU is behind right from the get-go, the graphics, or GPU, is actually on par. But this is what's getting throttled as the temperature starts to rise. The graphics performance is falling from nearly 22,000 to 15,000. But yeah, that's a synthetic benchmark. Would an average user notice a gap in performance? Well, yes and no. For the most part, things happen at a pretty similar speed on both, flicking through home screens, loading up applications, and so on. I couldn't tell the difference. Where I could, though, is in two specific use cases, number one being prolonged gaming. For short sessions, it didn't seem to matter what game I played. Both phones just flew through it, as you'd kind of expect for a phone that has Ultra in its name. I even pulled up the Dolphin Nintendo Wii emulator, because you might know emulation is one of the most brutal tasks you can give to a CPU. But even then, I couldn't pick fault in either. They were both running Animal Crossing at a completely locked frame rate, no drops at all. The issue with Exynos only started to come in with prolonged sessions, so after I carried this on for about an hour, and then jumped to another heavy game, called Bright Mobile, that's when you feel it. This is a resource-intensive game, and the Exynos just started to bottle it. You could almost feel the chipset screaming on the inside, and the frame rate tanked to something like 15 frames per second. Moving back to the Qualcomm, no such issue. It was just 60 frames per second locked. The second difference I saw, super minor, but was in the camera UI. So for example, shifting between the lenses is both smoother and faster on Snapdragon. Again, this could improve in an update, but it's just been my current experience. And speaking of cameras, the Snapdragon one even takes better photos, to which you might be thinking, how is that even possible? They have the exact same camera. And they do, but it's easy to forget that unlike with a PC, where you'll choose a processor and you'll choose a graphics card, with smartphones, the chipset contains everything. That's why it's called a system on a chip. So the difference between Exynos and Snapdragon is not just CPU, it's the graphics, it's the modem, and relevant to this case, the image signal processors. So last year, for example, it was pretty well documented that the Snapdragon Galaxy S10 took considerably better photos than the Exynos Galaxy S10 in terms of dynamic range and just straight up the ability to draw out detail. And that trend has continued here. It's not a world apart. You can't really tell the difference at a glance, and I don't want to overstate it, but it is a very consistent trend. You notice it mostly when cropping into your photos. The Snapdragon just appears able to bring out a sort of extra layer of detail. The textures that have almost disappeared on the Exynos, they're sharp with Snapdragon. Again, could be fixed in an update, this is just my experience. Now, the other important difference is power efficiency. Yes, both chipsets are cutting edge in terms of their fabrication process, but I was noticing carrying both phones with me on day-to-day -day basis, the Snapdragon would just finish a day with more battery left. So just to make sure I wasn't losing the plot, I put them side by side and 
tested it. So right here, you can see that both phones are on 100%. So I unplugged them. I opened a whole slew of applications. I went to the Play Store. I downloaded some stuff. I played tennis. I watched YouTube, pulled up a game of Reversi, ran benchmarks, and so on and so forth. You get the picture for three solid hours. Well, Exynos finished on 59% battery, which would give it an expected screen on time of about seven hours. But Snapdragon still had 71%, which would give that phone an estimated screen on time of like nine hours in a similar test. That's the difference between good battery and off the charts amazing battery. Admittedly, both phones were on 1080p at 60 hertz, so not their most demanding state, but it's still very, very impressive. And just to make it a fair test, they were on the same brightness, they had the same apps installed on them, and both phones have had less than 10 charging cycles. Okay, so you're probably starting to get the picture here. I'm sure there will be cases where the Exynos comes out on top, but in terms of the key pillars, the Snapdragon phone is just better. So it starts to beg the question, why? Why does Samsung bother with Exynos? Why not just pick the best chip and stick with it? Well, the thing is, Samsung are the makers of the Exynos chips. So in their ideal world, Exynos is all they'd use. Instead of buying components from another company like Qualcomm, who's got to take their own share of profits, if Samsung could just use their own parts, they'd save a ton of money. Not to mention they'd have more flexibility. If Samsung decide they want to sell a 4G variant of their phone for places like India, where 5G infrastructure barely exists, they can do that. Whereas Qualcomm bundles their chips with mandatory and expensive 5G modems that a lot of the world can't really take advantage of. The problem is that Samsung's chips can't be sold globally, really. When you send a text message on any phone, data gets converted to radio waves. However, there are actually two different ways this conversion can occur. You've got CDMA, which is used by a lot of the carriers in the US and a few other nations, and then GSM for pretty much the rest of the world. Long story short, Qualcomm's chips have historically been built with CDMA in mind. So they just work better for the most part in the US and other CDMA regions. But the obvious question then becomes, why doesn't Samsung just add the CDMA functionality to their own Exynos and then use them in the US? Well, if you search online about it, you won't really find one consistent answer. But the way I see it, there are three options. A would be that actually having Qualcomm on board eases supply chain stress. You think about it, Samsung sells millions upon millions of flagship phones. So having another company producing parts for them can sort of ease that workload. Scenario B is that Qualcomm doesn't let them. That company has some insane amount of patents relating to the CDMA standard. So it's possible that Samsung would be breaching some of them if it tried to add them into its own chip. Or C is just that Qualcomm and Samsung have some sort of agreement or even just a mutual understanding. Samsung keeps their Exynos chips out of the US and in return, they get first dibs on Qualcomm's best. In 2017, for example, it looked like Samsung bought Qualcomm's entire first batch of flagship Snapdragon 835 chips to the point where other manufacturers like LG, they were stuck with the Snapdragon 821 from the year before. Anyways, whatever the reasoning, the important message here is that while both of these phones are technically the Galaxy S20 Ultra, they're pretty different. And it's pretty clear that in the US, as well as other Snapdragon regions, you're getting a better deal, especially actually if you factor in that the US S20 Ultra is cheaper. Over here, you pay 1200 pounds, which if you convert to dollars is around $70 more. To be honest, everything's more expensive in the UK, so I'm kind of used to that. There is a good chance the Exynos could be patched, but I don't think any kind of patch is going to bridge that performance gap. The Snapdragon is a phone that performs better over a longer period of time. And just to kind of bring this all together, there's a bittersweet lining to the whole thing. Samsung recently announced that they're shutting down their CPU division. They'll still likely have Exynos chipsets, but instead of building their own CPU cores for themselves, they're gonna buy pre-built ones. So the good thing is that in future, the performance disparity might be less versus Qualcomm's. But the downside is that you've now got one less company competing in the mobile CPU market. And usually competition is what pushes companies to innovate. So what do you think? If you enjoyed this video, a sub to the channel would be incredible. Catch you next time.